Hello everyone, I am Chandrajit Singha. I have made this video for the students of class 11 science and also for those who have recently given their class 10 final exams and are looking forward to take science in their higher secondary. This video is based on the chapter 1 of the NCRT physics syllabus which is the physical world. It is a very interesting chapter. It will give you an idea about what physics is and also it will set up a tone for what you are going to learn in the next two years. So moving forward, the first question which arises is what is physics? Physics is the branch of science that deals with the study of the basic laws of nature. It also tries to explain the various natural phenomena like the planets revolving around the sun, the thundering and the lightning, the sea waves that we observe, the rainbows that we see in the sky, the twinkling of stars, the apple falling down. These are all explained with physics. Well, physics not only explains but also helps to predict future events. For example, an eclipse, why does an eclipse occur, can be explained with physics. Including some mathematical tools, we can also predict when it is going to occur next. So for any physical event, a logical explanation can be given with physics and its future predictions can be done with the help of some mathematical tools. This is why physics is often called the king of science and mathematics its queen. So the next topic is scope of physics. It has got two parts, the macroscopic and the microscopic. The macroscopic part deals with phenomena at large scales. Those which can be observed with the naked eyes like the motion of a car or a bullet, the trajectory of a ball, steam engines. These are all studied in the macroscopic part. The microscopic part deals with phenomena at the atomic or the molecular level. The macroscopic phenomena have been studied from a very long time. This is why it is known as the classical physics. It is generally governed by Newton's laws of motion, the universal law of gravitation. On the other hand, the study in microscopic level have been carried out recently. So it is known as the modern physics or the quantum physics and is governed by the quantum theory. So now we are going to see how physics and technology are related and how does it affect our society. Study of physics leads to the invention of new technology like semiconductors, we got modern computers, from electromagnetism, we got the fast communications, from nuclear fission, we got nuclear reactors and nuclear weapons. The technology has advanced immensely and it has got its disadvantage also. Einstein once said that, I do not know with what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. So what does it mean? Well, it means that if World War III happens, then the kind of weapons which will be used are so dangerous that it will wipe out almost the entire mankind. And those people who are going to survive have to start right from the beginning, which means the world will move back to the Stone Age. Now also from technology, we got new branches in physics like to improve the efficiency of a heat engine, we got thermodynamics. Then from electron microscope, we got biotechnology. So we can say that physics and technology are interrelated. Next, we are going to study the four forces in nature. The gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force. First, we will study about the gravitational force. 
You have already got a basic idea of the gravitational force in your class 9. This force of attraction between two bodies is directly proportional to the product of the mass of the two bodies and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So if we consider two bodies of mass capital M and small m separated by a distance r, then this gravitational force between these two bodies can be given by g mm by r square where g is the universal gravitational constant and the value of this g remains same everywhere in this universe as this force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance so if you increase the distance between these two bodies then the force will decrease and if you decrease the distance between these two bodies then the force will increase and it is an attractive force as this is an introductory chapter so only the basic idea of the gravitational force is given more details about the gravitational force are included in the upcoming chapters the next is electromagnetic force from the name itself you can get an idea that this is a force that deals with electric charges. Also, you have already learned that electric charges in motion produces magnetic field around them. Now, if you consider two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance r, then the force of attraction or repulsion between these two static charges is given by F equal to k q1 q2 by r square this equation looks like the expression for uh, the gravitational force here the masses are replaced by the charges and the constant k is a medium dependent that is the value of k depends on the medium in which the charges q1 and q2 are kept and you'll get to know more details about this force in your class 12. The nature of the force for two like charges is repulsive and for two unlike charges it is attractive. Next is the strong nuclear force. It is the force of attraction between the nucleons. So what are nucleons? Well, nucleons are protons and neutrons. It is the subatomic particles which reside inside the nucleus. So in the picture you can see that electrons are revolving around the nucleus which is made up of neutrons and protons. Protons are the positively charged particles. So from Coulomb's law, these like charges must repel away from each other, but this does not happen. So, there must be another strong force which binds these subatomic particles inside the nucleus. Well, for a proton proton interaction from Coulomb's law, they must repel away from each other. But due to the strong nuclear force, they are binded together. Sim same happens for. A proton neutron interaction and also for a neutron neutron interaction. The strong nuclear force only acts on proton and neutron, it does not have any effect on the electrons. As it always acts inside the nucleus, it is a very short range force. Next is the weak nuclear force, it only appears in certain nuclear processes. For example, in a beta decay, nucleus emits electron and neutrino. It is the interaction of this neutrino with other subatomic particles that is known as the weak nuclear force. More details about this weak nuclear force you will find in higher classes. Now we compare these four forces based on the range, objects and strength. The gravitational and the electromagnetic force are the long range forces whereas the strong and the weak forces are the short range. The objects affected by the gravitational force are all objects in this universe. For electromagnetic force it is only the charged particles. 
for strong force it is only the nucleons which is the proton and the neutrons and for weak force it is the neutrino or also you can say an anti-neutrino if we compare the strength of these four forces then we'll find that the gravitational force is the weakest among them the weak force is in the third place the electromagnetic force is in the second place and the strongest among them is the strong nuclear force many physicists in the past have tried to explain the different forces as separate aspects of one particular force in 1979 weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force were combined together as the electro weak force it was experimentally verified in 1984 so the main question which arises is can all the fundamental forces be combined to a single force well a force towards the unification is still going on the famous astrophysicist stephen hawking developed the theory of everything which is a hypothetical framework explaining all the physical phenomena in the universe Here we come to the end of this video. Do share your views on this video and if you did not understand any topic then please write it up in the comment section. I will be uploading a series of videos chapter wise based on the NCRT physics syllabus. Thank you.